the garage guys today's video i'm going to show you guys the power plant we're putting together for project ethel It's gonna work. All right, guys, before I go into what I'm putting together for Project Ethel, let me just make one thing very clear. I'm not an engine builder. I'm just a dude in a garage with high hopes and a small budget and a whole lot of finger crossing. And we're gonna start it with this right here. This is a slightly used, I'm gonna say it's a, a seasoned 350 Chevy. It's a four bolt main small block Chevy. It's 80 to 85 year range. It's decent, it's not the best, and it's definitely not the worst for the price I paid for it. We're gonna put this puppy together, and I'm not kidding when I'm telling you, we're going for 14 to one compression. So to make that happen, it's gonna take a whole lot of ingenuity and a good bit of luck too. So what I've got is a cast steel scat crankshaft, also slightly seasoned. I've got a set of scat 5.7 stock length rods, which can't hurt. I don't have my pistons yet. I had to special order those because I am running a 60 thousandths over small block and the piston I wanted wasn't readily available. Hopefully they'll be here soon and I'll show you just as soon as I get them. Uh, as far as the top end of this bad boy, I have come across a set of World Product cylinder heads. These have 202-160 stainless valves. We've got screw-in studs. It did have some bent valves, so I did order a new set of stainless valves. I've got new springs, retainers, locks, the whole nine for these heads. So we're gonna be going through these heads probably in the next video, getting them freshened up. Now, I've already sandblasted them, painted them. They didn't quite look this good when I got them, but I got a crazy good deal on those too. So just cause I'm really itching to see this thing together, as I show you some of these parts, not the crank, but like the heads, I'm gonna go ahead and start putting them on this engine so you guys can see what I see for what the outcome of this engine's gonna be. Oh man, I could have spent a few more dollars and got aluminum and probably saved myself a hernia. Woo. Oh, come on. Where's the hole? something so they don't fall off the uh, the engine here on the stand. Easy does it. There we go. All right, so here's our 350 Chevy with our World Products heads installed. Now, let's move on to the next part, which fills in this hole right here, which is not the intake, but the camshaft. Now, I'm not gonna go ahead and install this right now, but I am gonna tell you guys what I'm running. It's actually, it was a mistake on my part, honestly. 
I wasn't paying close attention to what I was ordering and I got a really good deal on it, so I wrapped it up. So what I have is a CompCams 12224-4. So this thing has duration of 248, 248 at 50 on 110 degree lobe separation. So it's a healthy little bump stick. But now that I've rambled about that for a second, let's stick this intake on and show you what I've got. Whatever, that'll keep it from sliding away. All right, so what we've got here is an old school Edelbrock Torker. This isn't the Torker 2, this is the original Torker. This is actually a rather old intake. This thing's probably as old as I am. As you can see, somebody's done some, some, some porting or milling work in here. The runners look the same way. They've been cleaned up really nice. What I'm gonna do is when I get the gasket I'm gonna run, I'm gonna lay it on each side, mark everything, and gasket match it just to make sure I've got no weird ledges or overhangs in that uh, in that part. But uh, nothing to it. We'll show you that when we get to that part of the build. But I don't know about you guys, but I think this thing is starting to come together. So here's a very important part of any engine build is some kind of aftermarket valve cover. What we have here is a set of Edelbrock Signature Series valve covers. These things are slightly seasoned as well, so they kind of match everything. They could definitely use a bit of polishing, but I give $20 bill for the pair of them, so I'm pretty stoked with those on my build. So I'm really liking what I'm seeing here. This thing's starting to come together. That little vision I've got in my head is really starting to materialize. And this looks to me exactly what I would expect to see in a car like that. So we've kind of got that classic muscle feel, and yet I think I've got the potential to make enough power to get those radial TAs off the ground. So this thing's definitely giving me the warm fuzzies. I love how it looks. I love how it's coming together, but I still got that nervous feeling. I've got to figure out how to make this thing run at 14 to one compression, and that's not gonna be easy. So my plan is to run E85. So I don't know if you guys might've picked up on this already, but that's why we're gonna call our project ethyl. Ethanol fuel, right? So this is a corn-fed dinosaur the way I'm looking at it, which I don't know, I think it's kind of cool. You know, you got all the old school hard iron parts with the modern day fuel. Problem is I had to figure out a way to get the fuel in it. So I spent some time going through the catalogs, looking at all the different carburetors and options, and I kept finding that I'm looking at about eight to $900 to get a decent carburetor. That's a hard pill to swallow, especially trying to build a car on a budget. So I did some more research and I found the solution. So I had a little bit of trouble explaining this logic to my wife, but when you're in a situation, you find carburetors are just too expensive to run that alternative fuel you wanna run, the trick is to spend more money and get yourself a Holly Sniper EFI system, right? This is an obvious, this is a no-brainer. I don't know why I didn't do this from the beginning. So actually, in reality, the carburetor and this EFI system are about the same money. So let's open it up and see what it looks like though. Woo -hoo -hoo. I like it. So I opted for the classic finish, which I don't know if it's quite as classic when you're looking at it on fuel injection, but this has the, uh, I don't know, the bronze or the, the zinc or whatever you want to call it. these wires i'm not used to carburetor shaped things having wires so this is the holly sniper this is all self-contained the computer the fuel management everything's in here this thing actually has the capability of managing the timing too so i mean you really can't beat it so let's stick this on the engine and see what this looks like on our classic intake So 
So I put it on there, and it, it looks good, but it looks like my studs are a bit long. So that's just not gonna work out. And I don't really wanna cut my studs, so I gotta come up with a better solution. So the stud issue has been resolved. All we had to do was add a cheater plate with some nitrous. So what I've actually got is 150 shot in here, and we're gonna be carrying around a 10 pound bottle of you bet your ass it's gonna do a wheelie. So the whole thing's really starting to come together. This is exactly what I wanted to build. Problem is, I still gotta build it. Yeah, it looks cool all stuck together, but we got a lot of work to do to sort this engine out. So I'm gonna get to it and get some of that work knocked out this week. Hopefully next video, we'll have these heads built and hopefully have some new pistons in to show you what we're working with. But for now, guys, I gotta end this video off right there. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.